Cardinals have found their catcher, signed Wilson Contreras to uh, uh, a five-year contract for $87.5 million. That's about $17.5 million per year. They paid the going rate. That's what you got to do if you want to improve your team. So I don't, I don't want to hear anybody fussing about, oh, that's too much. <laughs> no, no it's, actually it's not. You want to improve your team substantially at your weakest position. N- unquestionably your weakest position. And you have improved that position to use the war metric by about five wins. That is a huge upgrade. Uh, you don't get those things by paying, um, you know, by paying 25 cents when you need to spend a dollar, you know? Agreed. So, I don't want to hear it. Although you're welcome to join us uh, by texting in your reaction. What's that text, text message number, Jim Huber? 855-282-8255. And I'm with you um, in that my, top, my preference would have been Sean Murphy, but it's easy to say what your preference is. And one of the reasons I pivoted to Murphy, although all along I was like, hey, man, you got to get either Contreras or Murphy. You can't not get one of those two guys. Because, you know, Murphy, best guy on a trade market. Contreras, easily the best catcher in the free agent market. You have to, you know, you, you have to come away with one of those guys. So I would have been pleased either way. But there's something to be said. And I don't know what Oakland asked for. But you know, until we find out more about that, that, just as a general principle, there's something to be said um, about, okay, you spent money. And they, the Cardinals have plenty and plenty and plenty and plenty and plenty of money to spend. So they, they drew from their strength rather than maybe making a trade they'll regret later, although I still believe that they're a little too hung up on their own prospects. But, yeah, I, again, I don't care. They got Contreras, and it's a big upgrade offensively. You know, he can hit, hit, you know, he can hit fifth in your lineup. We'll, get, we'll go on all that. But, anyway, it's a good, it's good move. And um, I think he really wanted to be a Cardinal. He, he reveres Molina. He really does. And I think that Contreras, who was the one that invited uh, John Mazalak and – Ali Marmal down to his home in Atlanta, or excuse me, Orlando. And remember, we talked about that. Yes. Yep. We talked about that before. I do Any, anybody that. in the St. Louis media that they had a big meeting, and that's a good sign. That was last week. Um, I think Contreras wanted to let them know how much he wanted to be a Cardinal. Not that he was going to s- sell himself short, you know. Not that he was going to, you know, make it too easy. He wanted to get paid. He wanted length in the contract. But I, th- I think he poured his heart out because he is an emotional guy and he says what he thinks I think he poured his heart out and said look man you know from the time I was in the minor leagues uh, you know even as a kid you know I looked up to Yadier Molina he's my idol I I I I worship Yadier Molina I want to be the guy that replaces him where I think some guys would be a little uh maybe a little boy I don't know if I want to fill those shoes you know, oh, I think you're right about that. Contreras, 100%. he's he's a bold dude. He doesn't care. He he wants that because he loves Yadier and Molina, and he wants to be great. So I think the Cardinals did a good thing, and they got a player who really wants to be here. It's not like a, frankly, a Dexter Fowler situation because people forget this. I mean, Dexter Fowler didn't have a lot of people after him when the Cardinals signed him as a free agent, right? Right. You know, and Contreras, I think, had a pretty healthy market. Maybe not to get five years. I think the Cardinals probably wanted to close it, didn't want to take a chance of coming up empty or settling for an average catcher that average as an offensively and defensively. So they, uh, if they had to stretch out that deal to make it a five-year deal, that's good. Uh, you, when you see Aaron Judge getting nine years, he's older than Contreras. You see Aaron Judge getting nine years, and what was it, $360 million? Yes, Lots you know, and lots. you see some of these older pitchers getting, you know, 30, 40 million a year. You're seeing this, you're seeing that. You're seeing the deal that uh, Trey Turner got 300 million, uh, who's around the same age as uh, Contreras. Um, to get the best and to fill an urgent need, you, you're just, in, in this in this market with all this revenue pouring into baseball, and it's a lot of revenue pouring into baseball. And each team just got that $30 million in that BAM Tech payoff, right? Yep. You're going to have to pay through the nose. I mean, you, you can't go into that marketplace and expect to come out there without, for an elite free agent without spending a lot of money. So I was, I was just curious to see the reaction. And I saw a lot of, like, locally, a lot of uh, 
Oh, that's too many years. Oh, that's too much money. Is it? Are you all paying attention of what <laughs> players are signing for the last couple of years? What did you think they were going to do exactly if they had to sign a free agent? Dollars and terms continue to rise. This it, is the, the marketplace. Way, yes, it, that's the way it works. Uh, by the way, the, we all know what we've had here in St. Louis in terms of the catching yeah. numbers and OPS and all that. It's been below average. So you've got a guy, if you average it out, it's right around 30% above average over the last three or four years. It gives or takes a couple notches. You take that at that yeah. position. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand. Well, and then if they would the have, it, and then, it, you know, if they would have signed a much lesser catcher oh. who would have done nothing for them offensively and would have done a good, a decent job, a good job behind the plate. Same people be squawking and yelping. At the witch, see, he ain't trying to win. He's cheap. <laughs> Sell the franchise. <laughs> Then when he does spend money, they want to blast him for that. Oh, oh. I, I would have never spent that. Well, good. I, I wouldn't want you running the team. <laughs> Thank so, you for saying that, yes. So, anyway, I, I'm just acting up a little bit. That's what I do. So, Joe Sheen will be along uh, at 3.30 uh, on the phone. We'll talk to him here um, remotely from um, Friendly Sports Bar and Grill in South County. And Lou Korak, our friend from NHL.com and – SI.com, Lou Korak, who covers the Blues. He'll be here in person uh, 4.30 or so. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, at, at the usual routine, pretty much, at yeah. Friendly Sports Barn Grill today, we have a $25 gift certificate uh, from Kenrick's and uh, Meats and Market. Kenrick's Meats and Market. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a 25 gift certificate from Tangles Hair Studio 9964. Uh, is that LeMay Ferry Drive, I think? It, or Lynn Ferry. Lynn Ferry Drive. Yeah, I'm, Lynn my Ferry. bad. I, no, I'm, just, I'm, a, just, I'm just kind of a dummy sometimes. Um, and $25 gift certificate. That's a, that's a full salon for men and women. Tangles in South County. Uh, don't forget about, in fact, uh, I, think, I think Friendly Sports Barn Girl here last night had to pay out. Yeah, five goals or seven last night. Blues, so we got Blues somehow scored seven goals. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, it, that's this Blues special, five goals or more in a game. Uh, Friendlies buys you around on the house. Your, your selection, your, your choice of beverage. If they shut out a team, that's another round. But you got to be here. That's the only stipulation. And why wouldn't you want to be here, right? This 39, is the place to be, 3971 yeah. Bayless here in uh, South County. So um, – I want to get back to Contreras. We're, we're going to, because we're going to have all the time in the world to talk about the Blues later. Um, but first of all, let's note a couple other baseball moves. I mean, Aaron, Aaron Judge, with a lot of, after a lot of confusion, I mean, I think everybody, a lot of people just wanted him to go to San Francisco so bad that, oh, I don't know, they were making stuff up. <laughs> they were making it up it's last like, night. You know, I don't want him to go back to New York. Everybody hates the Yankees. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's close to a contract with the Giants. No, he wasn't. Nine years, three hundred sixty million, right from yeah. the Yankees. Uh, the Cars, the Cardinals, uh, lost out. Although I never took the Jose Quintana stuff seriously, I think that was one of those things. It's like, well, why would you even put that out there that you want to bring Jose Quintana yeah, back? I'm there with because you because all you're one. doing is misleading your fans. You you had you had no real inclination to do that, and you knew because he pitched so well for you last season after you got him from the Pirates, that there would be a pretty good market for him. So you weren't going to sign him. I'm sorry. You weren't going to get him for like, you know, $4 million a year or something. Okay? Exactly. So j just shut up about it. What is the point of teasing people for something that is highly unlikely to happen? But that's what they do. Uh, but he signs a, a good contract for him. I'm happy for him. Class act. Mets sign him to a two-year deal for $26 million. So he goes, I think he literally was paid like 4 or $5 million last year. So that's a nice, uh, that's a nice uh, raise for him. And he, like I said, I hope he does well. And um, Kenley Jansen and the Red Sox agreed on a two-year deal. I don't even know how much it is. It doesn't matter. I'm sure he'll, he's paid well. I think it was like $32 million. I'm sorry. I did have it down here. Thank you, Jim. And so those are the big free agent uh, – Move moves today. I didn't miss anything else so far. Yeah, that's we'll keep where an we're eye at. on it. So I want to go back to um, I want to go back to uh, 
Contreras, because a couple things, and we can revisit this again later for people who will tune in later. Um, you know, let's let's look at the nature of the upgrade, okay? Over the past two seasons, St. Louis catchers slugged 315. Over the last two seasons, Contreras slugged 452. 452, 315. That's a major upgrade. Yes. Uh, over the past two seasons, St. Louis catchers had a 594 OPS. Contreras has had a 797 OPS. Wow. Uh, more than 200 points higher. That's what you call a major upgrade, right? Yes. Uh, using, you know, uh, park and league adjusted runs created, the Cardinals were 32% below average offensively the last two seasons. 32% below average the last two seasons. Contreras, the last two seasons, 21% above average. So that is a swing of 32 plus 20. That's a swing of uh, 53%. Um, it's huge. St. Louis catchers wins above replacement the last two seasons. Minus 0.6. The worst in baseball, and that's actually below the replacement level. That's like signing a guy off the street and say, could you catch for us? Maybe a little better than that, but you get my Not point. Much. So they were 30th in catcher wins above replacement over the last two years. Not even at, not even at zero. They were below zero in terms of value. Uh, Contreras, the last two seasons, uh, has 5.6 wins above replacement just by himself, which was ranked fourth among – regular MLB catcher. So you've gone to uh, the minus, minus point, 0.6, you've gone that and wins above replacement, and you've improved that position by what you would call just about six wins. That is a huge upgrade. Absolutely. All, all of this stuff yeah. I gave you is a huge uh, up, upgrade. So they, they purchased a huge upgrade um, – to strengthen their weakest area offensively. Uh, and this is a guy who's been really consistent during his entire career. There's only like one season I looked at where it's like, well, he, was, he wasn't very good that year. That's one season. And he's played six, six well, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, seven seasons. So it, during, since he came to the majors, he leads uh, – we're talking about catchers that have had – we're not going to include catchers that have had like 300 plate appearances. Catchers that have had 1,500 plate appearances since the time Contreras came into the big leagues. He's got the best OPS of all those catchers. Um, he's about 15% above average. He's third in total bases at the position, mm -hmm. third in extra base hits, fourth in slugging, fifth in homers, fifth in doubles, sixth in RBI. So, you know, he is – the, the You know, J.T. Rio Muto has been a guy that, you know, I think everybody would put above Contreras, uh, and that's even offensively. Yeah, um, I agree with that. But if you look at some of the metrics, and you don't have to care about them, and that's all right, but since 2016, um, Contreras is second in Rio Muto in, in war. He is second in wins above average. He is second in offensive war, and he is fifth overall in defensive war. So you're looking, you're looking at a very consistent track record. This isn't like a guy that all of a sudden had a big year in 2022 and people are overpaying and they're, you know, they're expecting him a certain level of performance. Well, with this guy, like I don't know what it'll be like in the fifth year of his contract, but all, all of his stat cast stuff, like his hard hit rate and all the stuff you look for that, to indicate where a guy is. I mean, he's like a stat cast star, Contreras. Um, so when, when you look at the consistency and you look at where he's been the last couple of years, the most recent times, uh, I mean, they grabbed themselves um, maybe the second best offensive catcher in baseball. And, you know, we're going to get into this stuff, but uh, I finally did kind of a deep dive on this, but I'm not going to sit here and try to sell the idea that this is an elite catcher defensively. I'm not even going to sit here and try to sell the idea that Oh, he's good. He's really good. I'm not going to say that. But what I'm saying is, given his offense that he'll provide, given his offensive track record, if you have, a, you have to settle for a little less quality of defense, you do it. Um, and the other thing is, he's not as bad as a lot of whining people have been telling you. He's just not. Um, 
he was a plus eight in defensive run saved in 2021. He slipped to minus one this past season. Minus one with all that offense? Uh, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, he's been – the defensive run saved, he's been above average or exactly average in five of his seven seasons. You say, well, what about the other two? No worse than minus one in those two seasons. So what? He's, he's right there. I mean, what's the problem There's here? nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, okay, he's been slammed for his pitch framing. If you look back earlier in his career, his pitch framing was absolutely horrendous. I'm talking about 2017 through 2019. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. But since the start of the 2020 season, he's a plus two in framing runs. And in th these three seasons, he was never below average. So what – for the chicken littles, like tell, tell me where the crisis is. You got a guy who's actually the last three years a plus, you know, a slightly above average overall in pitch framing, and he's never been below average in any of those three seasons pitch framing. What? Where's the crisis? What? What? Are, so I get I get a little plus on that side of it, but I get this huge plus on offense, and I would complain about that. Caught oh. career caught stealing rate thirty one percent which is better than the overall MLB average at 26%. Uh, baseball Prospectus rated him number one among catchers last year in what they call takeoff rate. Fancy pants stat, here's what it means. Which catcher, out a regular catcher, mm -hmm. which catcher uh, is so feared for his throwing that – he suppresses the number of stolen base attempts against him. That's what I mean by takeoff. Right. You're taking off to steal a base. He was number one in suppressing that takeoff really? rate. Yeah. That, that tells me a lot because Rio Muto, I would have guessed, would have been number one. The fact that he's actually number one yeah. impresses me. And Rio Muto's right there. So, again, I'm being redundant and obnoxious, but I, I ask, what – what is the basis for all this panic about his defense? Why do some people just insist on being crazy and making things up about his defense rather than actually doing some work to find out and get to the bottom of it? It's, uh, Again, not it. saying he's Johnny Bench. No. Not saying he's Yadier Molina, right? Not saying he's Punch Rodriguez. He's fine behind the plate, and that's what I've been saying all along. Every time I say it, it's like, oh, he's a butcher. <laughs> he's a butcher behind the plate. No, he's not. What do you base it on? Give me some tangible evidence of that, right? And yeah. I tell you, and tell you one more thing about this. That it, here's another thing I've been hearing, mm -hmm. and we'll take a break after this. Okay. Saw that. Saw this all over Twitter the last week when Contreras and had the meeting, and you know it's called Murphy or Contreras, blah 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 blah. It's like, well. Contreras doesn't even catch anymore. I mean, the Cubs used him as a DH all the time. He doesn't, he doesn't even catch. And this is a good time for me to remind everyone, Yadier Molina is retired. Get over it because Yadier Molina was very unique in that him and Salvi Perez, a couple others, Real Muto, where they were still old school and they were still catching all the time, catching 130, 130, 145 135, 140 times a year when they're healthy, right? Yep. Managers have eased up on this. Catchers do not work as many games or innings as they used to, and there's nothing wrong with where Contreras stands on that list. Like, so people look at last year, oh, man, what's the point? He doesn't even catch. Uh, actually, yeah, he does. Um, let me find this, and then we'll take a break in my obnoxious opening segment on Contreras, but it's an accurate segment. It is accurate. Um, will uh, will be uh, will be complete so again understanding that the game has changed whether you like it or not no he's not going to catch or start as many games as Yard Molina but here's a, here's a little bulletin unless it's the guy in Philadelphia maybe the guy in Kansas City nobody would okay <laughs> so over the past five seasons Contreras ranks fifth in games caught fourth in games started, and fourth in innings caught. 
And then, all right, well, what about more recent times? The Cubs have eased the strain on him, and they realize that he can be a DH now that the DH is here. Kind of the same deal where uh, Ali Marmol uh, used Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado as a DH much more than we anticipated. That kind of deal. Yeah. You know? 100%. So, since the, uh, in the over the last two seasons, he ranks ninth in starts and 11th in innings. What Again, I ask, explain to me the source of your anxiety over some of these stats that apparently – I don't know whether you you want 1957 baseball to come back. I'm not sure what your issue is. But tell me why anybody should have anxiety over someone who over the last two seasons ranks ninth in starts at catcher and over the last five seasons ranks fifth in starts among catchers. Give me a reason why I should say, yeah, you're right to be nervous about that. Give me a reason. There, there, There are none. 